Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today we're going to do haunted houses. But first, don't forget to hit subscribe, the bell to be notified when I post new videos, and the thumbs up is very much appreciated. Okay, haunted houses. Check out these adorable little doll houses from the Dollar Tree. I got two to put together back to back to make a haunted house. Just removing the tape from inside the door and then I'm going to paint them black with spray paint for plastic and just kind of all over and a little bit on the inside. I got another two of those houses. I'm going to do a second one. I want to do two matching haunted houses and so I'm going to spray those black as well. In hindsight, I wish I hadn't spray painted them because I live in Florida and spray paint just never dries here. So lesson learned. I thought it would be easier to get a solid coat over those bright colors, but I kind of wish I would have just used chalk paint <laughs> because it was sticky and the paint was coming off for me. But what I'm going to go in and do is just go in with some chunky brushes in the color ivory chalk paint by Waverly and in that black color, which is the ink, and just go over and dry brush and look at the beautiful texture on the front of these little toys from the Dollar Tree. I got this idea. I've seen lots of people uh, make haunted houses out of these signs in some Facebook groups and I thought I would give it a try. Now I'm going to go traditional on this one. It's going to be a very traditional black and white creepy haunted house and I like the architecture of this particular toy house um, to be the creepiest. So the first set of these, I went in and dry brushed the ink, the charcoal, or the elephant with the gray and the ivory, and really took my time. And then this one, I just went back and forth with the ink and the ivory, and it turned out exactly the same. So I'm showing you that one because that way was way easier. Um, it's just the dry brushing brings out all that beautiful texture. Then you got to figure out how to get them together. There's little clips on the side, but they're tricky because you're trying not to break them. But don't worry, if you do break them, you can always just attach it together with hot glue. And I'm doing two fronts back to back and just using some hot glue to secure the roofs to each other. Just to make it tight and give us a full house. I didn't want a half of a haunted house. I wanted like full haunted houses. <laughs> so then I'm just going to distress a little bit to cover up the area that I just glued and kind of messed up a little because again, I spray painted. I knew better. I let it dry too and it just wouldn't dry. So I think the humidity is just too high here all of the time because I never can spray paint. <laughs> so that's what our little haunted house looks like. It's super cute. So I have it times two, and then I need a base for my little haunted house. And I thought I would use some of these little bamboo cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. I have too many, and I use lots today, so great news. Um, I need to get rid of some of them. But I'm going to make um, the base look like dead grass, but I don't want this bright wood showing through. So I'm just going to go over with that Elephant Gray Chalk Paint by Waverly and just do one coat of the chalk paint just to darken those little cutting boards a little bit. And I'm also going to go around and do the edges on both of them. And these are the perfect base for something. They're heavy, they're straight, they're thick, and they're perfect for these haunted houses today. And these two haunted house projects, I'm doing two because I'm going to do one on each side of my TV and I want them to be kind of symmetrical. So that's why I'm doing two the same. And I'm just going to attach those with our base with just a little bit of hot glue. And I'm just going to glue those kind of to the center of the cutting board. And that's going to give me a small base where I can make a yard for our little haunted house. Now, since there are two fronts on here, you can make it where it sits on a table or something and you can see it from both sides and it would be super cute on both sides. Where I'm going to put it, you're only going to be able to see it from the front, so I am only going to really decorate one side. But to make it look all spooky, I'm going to use some of the Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree and just hot glue that moss um, around in sections until I cover the base. Now, I thought Spanish moss would be perfect because it's going to look like the grass is all dead and nobody cuts it. And so it gave my perfect haunted house feel. I thought about putting a fence around it, 
Um, there is kind of a built-in fence on the house for the porch. And then I thought it would cover up the decorations that I used, so I decided against it. But a fence around it would be kind of really cute, too. So that yard looks pretty good and covered, and I'm going to go in and do the same thing to my second house, just working in sections at a time, and it's pretty easy to glue down that Spanish moss. Now, my husband saw these a while ago, and he said, well, those are store-bought, and I'm like, uh, no, they're not. I made these. He was surprised, actually shocked, when I told him that these were little toy dollhouses from the Dollar Tree, because <laughs> they don't look like they cost a dollar for real. So once I get all my Spanish moss on there, I'm just going to give it a haircut with some scissors just so it doesn't like hang out all over my base and cleans up the edges and gives me a nice rectangular shape. And if you're working with this stuff, be prepared because it is kind of messy. But look at that spooky feel it's giving me with that paint job and that moss. Now time to decorate. I have these wood stickers from the Dollar Tree and I thought the bats and the spiders were perfect. Now the bats are natural wood. I thought they were too bright, so I'm just going to do a very quick stain with some Antique Wax by Waverly on all four of my bats, and I'm going to use those to decorate my little haunted house. Um, I do go ahead and kind of make them symmetrical. These stickers have like a little double-sided tape on the back, and I'm just attaching the hot glue to that sticker to make it um, stay a little bit better than just the sticker would. So I'm just kind of kind of arranging my little wooden bats on my roof of my little haunted house. And then I'm going to go in and do my other house. And I'm going to do it in a mirror pattern. Um, just because they're going to be next to each other kind of, but separated. And I thought it would be fun if they were just kind of mirrors of each other. But basically I'm going to decorate them the same. Then I thought the black spiders were perfect, so I'm also going to use those just on the house to make it look creepy, like there's a black spider attacking the house. I kind of wanted to use the witch, but it was covered in glitter, so I decided against it. Now I needed some tiny skulls, so I'm just using these skulls off these bows from the Dollar Tree. They kind of fall off anyway, so you might as well. And they were the perfect tiny size for a haunted house. Finding things tiny enough to decorate these things with was definitely a challenge, but look how spooky and cute they turned out. Now you'll notice that these dollhouses from the Dollar Tree are different. They're white with the pink roof, and they have a totally different architecture than the first one. I chose the first ones because I thought those were really creepy, and it gave me that really spooky um, decor. But this house, I feel, is a little bit cuter, so I thought this would make a perfect haunted beach house. Now, I'm just removing uh, the tape from inside the door, and I'm going to spray paint these as well, but this time with this beautiful sea glass color. Now, once I get that on there, I'm going to go in and distress with a chunky brush, just alternating between two different chalk paints by Waverly there in the color agave and in the color pool. I'm just kind of going all over and kind of fixing the paint job from the spray paint because, again, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but I spray painted all three of them at the same time, so no lessons learned. And going all in, they have these cute little windows and stuff that you can pop out. Um, the door opens and shuts. So when I spray painted them, I had the doors slightly open on both so that it didn't really get glued shut with the paint. And then I am just going in, getting it distressed how I like. Now I need to attach them together like I did the first one. And it's a little tricky, but you can pop those together back to back. And we're going to have our little beach house. Just going to use some hot glue to glue the two roofs together to give us a solid full house. And one of my viewers on my post today put, oh, I can't wait to see um, a beachy haunted house. And I'm like, oh, how did you know? I couldn't resist. I had to at least try it. So now I'm just going in and distressing all over to repair any damage for me touching the spray paint, even though it should have been dry. And then I'm going to go in with ivory chalk paint by Waverly and one of those chunky brushes and distress all over to bring out the cute little design on the house. Now, 
I decided I want my beach house to be on stilts, so I thought that would totally add to the effect. So I'm using some of these mini Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree and a dot of hot glue and just gluing two together, and those are gonna be a perfect little stilts for our little beach house. I'm gonna use one of these little wood craft woods from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna glue one of those stilts to each corner. Basically, I'm making kind of like a little table and this little wood, um, art wood that I got from the Dollar Tree, it was the perfect size, almost the same size as our house. So once I get those glued on there, I have my base, my foundation for my house, and I'm gonna use another one of those bamboo cutting boards from the Dollar Tree and just attach that little table that I made to my cutting board. And now we have a foundation to put our little beach house up on stilts. I'm so glad I put it on stilts. I think it really added to the effect that it was a haunted beach house. Now we're at the beach, we need sand. So I'm gonna use some of this sand from the Dollar Tree and I am just gonna go in with some cheap school glue and a foam brush and do a layer of glue all over the bottom. And we are going to cover that with that sand there. And I find a coat of school glue works really well to do the first coat. You can't really do more than one coat with this method, but I'll show you what I use here to get an even coverage of sand. So I'm just spreading out one thin coat all around my stilts. I did this after I attached my stilts because I knew that I wouldn't be able to glue the wood to wood very good if the sand was already there. So this is the spray glue from the Dollar Tree. It's the spray multi-purpose glue. And I'm spraying that on top of the sand and then just sprinkling it with a very thin layer of sand over the top of that. And that's gonna glue down my sand and keep it on the little cutting board. Now, I wanted an area where there's gonna be a little bit of the water from the ocean lapping up against our beach house. So I'm using some of this tacky glue I was a little low on it, it was hard to get out, but I needed a really thick glue because I'm gonna use these little blue pebbles from the Dollar Tree to try to replicate water like splashing up against one of the pillars of our house. And I wanna decorate like the sand and under the house, so I didn't wanna go too crazy with the water, but I think this gave me a fun little representation of water because I have a plan. <laughs> And the only thing that was difficult about this was getting that tacky glue out of the container. But that's about what I want. It's just a little quadrant of a wave. And I'm going to use some of that spray adhesive to keep that down as well. And attach my house to its base with just some hot glue. Okay, it's time to decorate. So this is a pink flamingo lip gloss from the Dollar Tree. It had a crown on the head. All I did was snip it off with a pair of scissors. And I'm using that ink chalk paint by Waverly to make a creepy black flamingo, not a pink flamingo. And I thought about doing the skeleton on there, but I really didn't think I could pull it off. So we're just gonna do a creepy black flamingo. But I do have skeleton black flamingos that I put in my front yard for Halloween every year. And I also thought about doing a mermaid. I was gonna do a mermaid skeleton, but it was just too hard. It was too small to paint. So my little flamingo needs some legs. And so I just cut off both pointy edges of two toothpicks. And I'm using a bunch of hot glue to glue that to the bottom of it. And he has legs. So that's gonna decorate my sand. Now here's my stash. I was dying to find stuff that I could use and I decided to start making stuff. This is that Model Magic from the Dollar Tree and I just got the white kind because I didn't couldn't find the color that I wanted. And I end up using a half a package per tentacle. That's right, I'm making like a giant sea monster like octopus coming out of the water attacking our haunted beach house. Now this is just a retractable pen that's retracted and I'm using it to carve the little two feet into my tentacle and I'm going to have this one like coming out straight up out of the ocean and I'm going to make two more tentacles. Now I leave them white um, until I get them on the house and let them dry for a little bit. They were still kind of wet when I painted them but I knew I needed to bend them and such and so I that's why I didn't paint them first. 
but hopefully they will harden up. If not, they're on there pretty secure. So that one's going to be in the corner. It's going to be lightly touching the beach house. And then I'm going to make a third one with another half of a package of that model magic and just roll it together, making one end pointier and then going over with a pen and we have a tentacle. They were actually way easier to make than I could have imagined. And I fulfilled a challenge to my son who really wanted me to use a sea monster in my Halloween decorations. And a haunted beach house, of course I need a sea monster, right? And that one in the front, I have it actually wrapping around um, the stilt, so it's really cool. And they're so super flexible. I can make it any direction that I want, and I just attach those with hot glue and let those to dry for a little bit. Now, I couldn't find any palm trees or anything, but I found this succulent from the Dollar Tree, and it kind of reminded me of dune grass, and so I'm going to kind of put that in the back of my house with just a little bit of hot glue onto the sand. I thought I needed a car to park underneath my house since it's up on stilts. And I found this little truck at the Dollar General for $2. It's a perfect size. I just pulled the succulent out of the back. And the only thing I have to fix is the color. Whoever painted this thing, it's ugly. But the tires are painted really well and the bed of the truck is painted really well. So I'm just going in with a tiny brush and some chalk paint by Waverly in the color of agave. And we're gonna have a beautiful little beachy blue truck um, for fall at our little haunted beach house. I decided to go all over the bumper, even the windshield, because I really did not like the way it was painted. And just trying to avoid uh, the areas that were good, the brown and the black. And I do get a little bit of paint on them, but I go back in here in just a second with some paint pens. And we are going to touch this little truck up. He was the perfect size. I saw him. I had no idea what I was going to do with him, but I knew that I probably would need him. And I'm so glad I picked him up. So I got it all painted that color. I'm not really going to paint the windshield or the bumper. I'm going to kind of leave it all that blue color. I think it looks really cute. And you can see the indentations. And then I'm just using a light brown paint pen to repair any damage I did to the bed of the truck. Where I got a little bit of blue on there. And then a black paint pen just to go around my tires. Just to make them look cleaner. And what I'm going to do with my little beachy blue truck is just fill the back of it with pumpkins. I thought that would go fun with my little haunted beach house. And I'm just going to use the little tiny orange pumpkins that are on like the skewers. And three of them I think will fit perfect. I didn't like the toothpick stems they had though. So I'm going to use like a thicker skewer here. And I'm just going to use that light brown paint pen to paint a little bit of that brown. And then I'm gonna go in here with my fancy dancy miter scissors and cut three tiny stems for the top of my pumpkins. And that looked way better. I just put that in there and then just painted the top brown. And we have three little pumpkins for the back of our little pickup truck, another little blue truck. And I'm just gonna attach those with a hot glue in kind of a random pattern, like they're stuck in the back of my truck. And I thought I would have that parked underneath my house. I kind of want it crooked so that you can see that it's a truck, not just the bed. And so I think that looks really good. And to prevent it from going anywhere, I'm just going to use a little hot glue to attach that truck and our little black flamingo to the sand to decorate the yard of our haunted beach house. Now, I had a hole in the top of the flamingo's head from where I cut off the crown, so I just filled that with a little bit of that model magic that I had left over and just touching that up with some more of that ink chalk paint. Now, to decorate the house, I have this great seashell I found at the beach, and I thought it would make a perfect ghost. So I just do three dots with a black paint pen, and I can have a little ghost shell peeking out of a window. And then I thought I could make a shell spider with this black shell I found at the beach and a little spider from the Dollar Tree. I want it to be kind of match more, so I'm using that ink color just to darken up my shell a little bit. And we have a shell spider. I love both of those. I think they're so much fun. And I think that's enough decorations for our little haunted beach house. 
Now, I got to looking at the little um, house and it was a little bit too pretty. It looked like a beach house. It didn't really look like a haunted beach house. So I'm just going to distress it with some antique wax by Waverly and a dry brush and kind of go all over and make it look older, a little bit creepier, not quite so pretty. And just go around all four sides of our little house. And that definitely made it look a little bit creepier because it's a haunted house. It has to look a little bit creepy, right? And I plan to have like the shell peeking out of a window as a ghost. So I'm just going to attach that with a little bit of hot glue peeking out of one of the top windows. That turned out so fun. And then I'm going to have the giant shell spider like attacking the top of our little haunted house. And so I will just attach that to the top of our house with hot glue as well. Once I get that little ghost in the window just the way I like it. And this was so much fun. I love those two projects. They're so coastal and they're so fun. Okay, there's only one thing left to do on our haunted beach house. And that is to paint um, our little sea monster. So I'm gonna paint it this pumpkin color chalk paint by Waverly. This is gonna match those pumpkins, very Halloween color. It's also a great color for a giant octopus, right? And so I'm gonna go in with a tiny brush and paint our tentacles. Now you'll remember that I stamped the two feet on there with my pen. And so I don't go oh into the edges like or to the grooves of those circles because I want you to be able to see the two feet. So I just kind of quickly paint over that part. And so you can kind of still see the little white circles. And I have to be really careful not to get too much paint on the blue rocks or the house. And so I kind of just take my time and go around and paint our little tentacles orange. Now, this haunted beach house was is my absolute favorite. It took a lot of creativity and thinking, but man, it really turned out great. I'm just going to go in with some agave and paint that base blue too so it matches in with my house and doesn't look like that natural wood that it was. And that is the final step in our haunted beach house. Look at that. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. It's so fun. I can't wait to display this. Okay, up next is one more haunted house. I'm going to use these little wood haunted houses that I got at the Dollar Tree and some of these rulers. Um, these are the two pack of rulers from the Dollar Tree that have the stickers on the front. They're a great source of wood. And I am going to build a little 3D um, wood um, haunted house using these supplies. Now, the ruler is the perfect width to fill in all the gaps. And so I'm going to use my new miter saw. I love it. I don't know how to use it, but I love it. I got lots of practice here cutting um, ruler pieces into all of the walls and roof lines of this thing. It was a little bit more intricate than I thought, but it definitely turned out pretty cool. So I wanted to do a different feel instead of the plastic that I was using on the other haunted houses. I want this haunted house to be a farmhouse. Um, like a farmhouse country haunted house and I wanted it to look really rustic so I wanted to make it out of wood. Now this has like lots of roof lines so I'm just kind of measuring one piece at a time and then going in and attaching that with a little bit of hot glue on the ends and the sides and so I do like the original roof but it also has the two like turrets coming out of the top. You could kind of leave those, but I'm going to be extra and do all of it. So I cut a side to each side of my turret, and then I also come cut the roof for that as well. And I'm just taking my time and putting this together kind of like a puzzle. And it was kind of a really fun project to put together. I like the vibe that it turns out. And you could like make it like bigger by using like a wider piece of wood in this prop. But this I have both the bases together. So kind of everything matches up really nice and you don't have to do a separate base. 
and I think it ends up being wide enough. And so I am measuring uh, the little roof pieces. The only trouble I had up there was when I was gluing down my ruler, I was using the little raised part on the inside. And so that prevented um, the roof lines from matching up perfectly. But that's okay. I just filled it in with a little bit of hot glue and I have plans for our little haunted farmhouse roof as well. So three rulers was perfect for this project and fills in all of the sides. I just have one more little piece of roof left here to cut and glue in there and we have a farmhouse. Now I didn't use a lot of hot glue there so I do want to clean it up a little bit so I just go in there with a sanding block and try to sand off any excess glue and make that a little bit smoother um, surface for me to paint. So when I was thinking about this, I was really like farmhouse. I want to do like ivory and black is what I was thinking. So I'm just going to go in and paint my entire haunted house here with the ivory chalk paint. And including the base. So I'm just going to do the sides, the roof, and the front and the back in this ivory color. I end up not liking this color and I do kind of end up changing it, but... <laughs> This project did take me a little while, but I got it exactly the way that I was envisioning. So just going over all this with a coat of that ivory chalk paint, you can still kind of see the hot glue in some places, but it's going to look all rustic and distressed and no one will ever know. You can kind of see there what I had to do. Like it had a basic like house roof and then it had like a turret on the left and the right. And the last side is going to have two fronts, just like my other one. Um, the only thing I do different on this haunted house is I decorate both sides. So um, it is a decoration that you can um, use and see from both sides. And then I want to distress it, of course. So I'm just using agave. Um, at the end, you never see this color because I do change it a little bit. But when I started, I was thinking coastal farmhouse, but you know how projects evolve sometime and this project ended up into a haunted farmhouse, no coastal. <laughs> so I get that all painted and then I wanted to stress it a little bit. So I'm just using some antique wax by Waverly and trying to darken up the windows and the doors. I thought about putting like colored paper behind the windows or pictures or something like that, but I kind of liked it all open, including the door, because it made it look like very vacant, like a vacant farmhouse to make it look a little bit more haunted. Now I'm going to use some of these cookie sheets from the Dollar Tree. You get two to a package. They're a really thin foil cookie sheet, but they have this great texture and they're so thin and easy to cut. So I'm measuring how wide a strip needs to be and just cutting a strip of that cookie sheet. And I'm going to cover all of my roof with this cookie sheet. and It's going to give me a fun little metal roof. Just attaching that with hot glue, the metal gets hot, so use something to push that down. And I'm gonna do the two little soffits first. And then the other roof was a little challenging, but um, I do get it to work here. So I'm doing um, just the underside roof here. And again, just attaching that with hot glue. I'll end up doing that on both sides. And then there's a little area in between the two soffits that I will need to cover with the metal as well. This gave me um, the illusion of a metal roof. I'm not gonna leave it like all super shiny like this, but this is how it starts out. Now that little piece in the middle, I just kind of cut a little piece, put it in there, bent it. It was too long, but that's okay because I'm just gonna go in there with a um, X-Acto knife and just cut off the excess and all of our roofs have metal on them. And just trimming that up and here we go. Another bamboo cutting board for the base. It's a perfect size for haunted houses, people. 
but I want to cover it with some burlap. So I'm using um, just this big burlap roll that I picked up at Walmart. And I'm going to attach that with a little hot glue on both sides of the bottom. It's almost the exact width of our little cutting board. I thought this would look very country, kind of like hay, kind of like dead grass for a foundation for our little haunted farmhouse. Now here I am distressing the roof. I told you I wasn't gonna leave it all shiny. So I'm using um, a chunky brush and antique wax by Waverly and very gently um, sponging that with a paper towel because I don't wanna take all the antique wax off the metal, which would be really easy to do. I just want to leave a nice like little rusty texture. So I'm gonna attach our little haunted house to our burlap board, just kind of in the center and then we can work with decorating this thing. I found these little mini hay bales at the Dollar Tree. I get them on there and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't like the color of my house. So I make a custom color. I use ivory, cashew, and even a little bit of that maize yellow because I want the house to be the same color as these pumpkins. And I wish I would have grabbed them before because then I would have known that I was in kind of a way, it was they were way too, it was way too white. So I go in and I paint it my new custom color, go in, quickly distress it as well. And I like it way better. It matches my pumpkins, which is, I, I just didn't want a lot of different colors of white and I didn't want to go in and paint all of those pumpkins. It's a lot of work. Once I get it how I like it, I'm gonna attach those mini hay bales again. They're the perfect size one to go on each side of the door. So I do both sides. Cause again, I'm gonna do like a two sided haunted house on this one. And then you couldn't really see, you know, where I had to find the edges of my windows with my um, antique wax before. So I decided to do it with a black paint pen and do like a sloppy outline on all of those to kind of bring those out a little bit and make them look a little bit more farmhouse. And then distressing them just a tad. Okay, here's the little pumpkins. They have wire on the back. You get four to a package at the Dollar Tree and these are the perfect color and size for this project. And I thought I would just group some pumpkins on both sides of our little coastal farmhouse. And then I will use a couple of them for jack-o'-lanterns as well. I decided I want three on each side. I'm gonna put two up against the house and one kind of out a little bit, making it symmetrical and just attaching those to my burlap with hot glue. And then I'm gonna do a jack-o'-lantern for both sides of my house, just using a Sharpie and drawing on a very simple little jack-o'-lantern face. I thought that looked very farmhouse Halloween and a, just another little cute detail to this little haunted farmhouse. So we have two little jack-o'-lanterns. I found the Sharpie worked better than the paint pen because I had more control and more of a finer cut. Now, again, I was having trouble finding things small enough to decorate this with, but I have these little Halloween rings from the Dollar Tree that have the bats, the skulls, and the spiders. And the bats are perfect. I just cut off the ring part and I'm attaching those to my farmhouse with just some hot glue. I'm not gonna use the skulls or the um, spiders just because um, they're not really the right colors that I want for this project. You get a million of those in a bag for a dollar. <laughs> what a deal. And I found a couple other little things here. I'm going to do a little ghost peeking out of a window. So I'm going to use one of these little stickers from the Dollar Tree. And I am just going to attach that with hot glue to the inside of the window. It was a little tricky getting in there. Probably would have been better to do this before I put it all together, but I eventually get it in there and we have a little ghost peeking out. If you don't have the sticker, it'd be really easy to make of this because a ghost face is just circles. And then I thought it'd be really fun to attach some of these little black rats. I got these in a multi-pack for a dollar at the Target dollar spot. They're big, but we can have a big creepy black rat to go with our bats. I attach 
a second bat to the back and now I'm making a sign for the front just using a popsicle stick and I just cut it really jagged along the edges. I kind of split the wood but that kind of um, added to the effect and I just do that in the same color as the house that ivory color that I mixed. Now I decided I still needed more detail so I'm going in and outlining the windows and doors again with my black paint pen and this time I decide to go in also outline all the roof lines and the sides of the house just because I felt like I needed more black. Um, I needed more contrast to make this look a little bit more farmhouse and just a sloppy outline. I want it to look rustic and I'm glad I did that. I think it definitely helped. So one side is going to have uh, the two bats and the jack-o'-lantern and the rat and the other side is going to have one bat and this little sign. And I'm making this with a Sharpie too. I'm just writing beware on that in kind of a creepy font. And I'm just going to glue that on the front of our little haunted farmhouse. And then I decide I want to use my black paint pen and just do that front and ed back edge on my cutting board just to bring in another little element of black. And that is all there is to it. Final reveal time. Here's our spooky classic black and white Halloween haunted houses using all supplies from the Dollar Tree. We got bats and spiders and skulls. And look how creepy looking that looks. It was so easy. And my favorite, we have our coastal haunted house. We have our little ghost shell, our shell spider, and our house is up on stilts with black flamingos, seagrass, a little blue truck filled with pumpkins for Halloween. And oh no, it's being attacked by a sea monster. <laughs> I had so much fun putting my haunted beach house together. I couldn't find anybody that ever done one before. And so it was just straight ideas. And here is our little haunted farmhouse. Looks very country and rustic and white and black. And I think it turned out really cute too with a little metal roof. Which project was your favorite? Do you like making haunted houses for Halloween? And what is your theme? Do you like traditional? Do you like coastal? Do you like farmhouse? I did all three for you today and I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button. Leave me a comment below. What was your favorite project? And don't forget, please subscribe. I hit 3,000 subscribers, so that's pretty